Hey everybody, Morbtron here. Today we'll be going over fusion rifle changes that happened going into Season 10 and talking about how effective or not effective they were. So I've got a number of different fusion rifle archetypes with me. We'll go over range testing in the Crucible here as well, but also looking at fusionable patterns, just discussing different fusion rifle archetypes uh, as well. So the main nerf going into Season 10 was to reel back and bring down the Aaron Till FR4. Now, this fusion rifle in certain roles was so overpowered and game-breaking to the point where you can get a, uh, get a kill at infinite range in the Crucible. And so the nerfs that happened to fusion rifles in high-impact frames specifically were designed to bring the air until down, basically. And the air until was brought down. It was brought down to a decent level, as you'll see in the range testing. But basically, my role, my specific role here of air until could reliably get an elimination at about 27 meters. And now it can do that at about 20. 22 sometimes, it depends on how accurate the fusion bolts decide to be. So one of the changes that they did, or a few of the changes that they did, if you didn't know, the TLDR version of the fusion rifle changes and nerfs was that they brought down the damage fall off floor, meaning that uh, at infinite range, the damage that an air and till would do if a fusion bolt landed was reduced. And that made it so you could not get a kill at infinite range anymore. That was good thinking. That shouldn't have been a thing anyway. Another thing they did is they reduced the base range of all fusion rifles, or so they said, but really they only reduced the base range of high impact frame fusion rifles. Other fusion rifle archetypes uh, were unaffected by that change, which is good because they were already underperforming. So the last big thing that they did to nerf the air until was they made it so that your different optics uh, that you could choose from on an air until now you cannot choose optics on all fusion rifles some of them you have barrel mods actually most of them you have barrel mods to choose from but these amelon ones you can change out to the scopes and if you had a longer zoom scope not only did it give you just a little bit more range if you see here the stat changes switching between this medium zoom and this long zoom scope um there's a tiny bit more range, in sequential amount of range difference there. Uh, the big thing was the longer zoom scope, for whatever reason, made the weapon more accurate. Don't know why. That's not how scopes and weapons work in the real world. But um, that's the way it worked. And so they changed that. And so they changed it so that actually made sense. Switching between scopes now actually does not change the accuracy of the weapon. Which is... Fine, it should be like that anyway. Uh, but basically, so they made it so that air and tills are not just far and above the best fusion rifles out there, but they're still the best fusion rifles out there. And that's kind of my big gripe with this change. Now, I do have a gallant charge, and my gallant charge, when I reviewed this specific roll, you know, it has tap the trigger, it has a range battery, it has a barrel choice and not optics, but it has a range masterwork. And when I reviewed this thing, I basically called it the solar version of my air and till. And it basically is now exactly that. It's basically just a solar air and till because the optics that you cannot choose on a gallant charge, and by the way, you can no longer get this weapon, um, they don't matter anymore. Literally makes no difference as far as accuracy is concerned. So a gallant charge is basically just a solar air and till at this point, which is fine, whatever. What I would like to see Bungie do, though, is make it so that different archetypes of fusion rifles were better. So maybe this pro Elium, or this Epicurean, or this Dreambreaker. This Dreambreaker, by the way, is a spicy little toaster. So it has liquid coils, which increases damage but slows the charge rate. So basically, bringing it closer to that air and till level of damage. But it also has tap the trigger, it also has rangefinder, and it has full bore for increased range which also decreases stability, but that doesn't hurt it too bad, actually. But it also has a range masterwork. This thing can get a kill at 20 meters, whereas my Aaron Till and Gallant Charge can get a kill at 22 meters. Now, granted, 20 meters is pushing it for this, and sometimes you just don't get the kill because the fusion rifle bolts just kind of fly off into Narnia, but you can still occasionally get a kill at 20. Now, I would like to see other fusion rifle archetypes actually buffed to be useful. 
Take this Pro Elium for di example. The 540 charge time fusion rifle archetypes or rapid fire. You have more ammo reserves, slightly faster reload, the magazine is empty. That's all fine and dandy, but these fusion rifles, since their range is so bad compared to high impacts and even just other fusion rifle archetypes, these things are basically useless. If anybody on the enemy team is using this other special weapon, it's called a shotgun. Uh, these things are basically useless, and if, unless you catch someone completely off guard, um, you're not gonna you're not gonna win. But this role specifically on this Proelium would be a very good role on a Proelium. It's got a stability battery. The scopes don't matter anymore. It's got threat detector, which increases stability within 12 meters, and tap the trigger, which is a great perk or great trait on any fusion rifle now. But Fusion Rifle Bolt Spread is the thing that uh, you need to take into account when looking at Fusion Rifles, and then after this we'll be going into range testing in the Crucible. But just real quickly here, so we have just basically randomness when it comes to Fusion Rifle Bolt Patterns with the uh, Pro Elium. And if we just switch over real quick to my Aaron Till, you can see here it's a lot more reliable. You know, there's not as much side to side. You can basically count on what an Aaron Till or another high impact fusion rifle is going to do. And that's why they're just better. Not only that, but their range and damage is a lot higher as well. But now going into crucible damage testing, there's going to be two people that you'll see here that I'm testing with. You'll have Ducky and you'll have Plazen Hook. If you see Plazen Hook, know that it is post season 10 update. So the fusion rifle changes are in effect. If you see Ducky as my target, just know that that is prior to Season 10. So, again, if you see Ducky as my target, a female hunter, prior to Fusion Rifle changes. If you see a male Titan as the intended target, just know that it is after intended changes, or after the Fusion Rifle changes, after Season 10 launched. And I'll kind of go over the range. So as I just stated, if you see Ducky, it is prior to Season 10. If you see Plazen Hook, it is after Season 10. So the first thing that you saw there is my Aaron Tail at 27 meters, securing an elimination. And here at 27 meters against Plazen Hook after Season 10, it's just not getting the job done at 27 meters. End up having to go up closer. 22 meters is where my, my Aaron Tail specifically can secure a kill. Basically, right now, the golden rule to any fusion rifle is as long as each fusion rifle bolt can hit for 36, you're pretty good, and you can end up getting the kill. So we see here, switching to the medium zoom scope, and again, we're going to be at the same range of 22 meters, and you'll see here, it still gets the elimination. A little bit less damage, but there is a smidgen bit of difference in range. So switching over to the Dream Breaker prior to Season 10 here. This is 15 meters, that's the maximum that that archetype could do, and it is unchanged going into Season 10. We are still at 15 meters there. But now you'll see here, switching over to Liquid Coils, which increases the damage. That is actually going to increase the effective range because you're increasing the damage per bolt. Like I said, 36 is the golden number, or somewhere close to it. Um, so you'll see here, 20 was not cut and it scoot up to 18, and we're able to secure a kill. So that's basically three extra meters off of just liquid coils, something to look for. Now Bastion, uh, just because other exotic fusion rifles are not affected by this, and Bastion was not either. But I wanted to double check just to make sure, because Bastion actually is affected by range, whereas other fusion rifles uh, like Jotun and Telesto are just not affected by range because of how the weapons are designed. But that's it for this fusion rifle test. So if you appreciated this kind of video or you like the video, hit the like button for me. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you are new here, subscribe for more Destiny 2 content. But do not forget to have a good day, everybody, and I will catch you all next time.